Today we're yapping about 10 or so players that you need to pad the bottom of your fantasy football rosters with, okay? Stash them. Do whatever you need. Maybe this is for people that have drafted already, and these guys are available on your waiver wire, all right? Keep them there for a couple weeks. See what happens with them. Maybe this is for people that haven't drafted yet, and you want to pepper the late round picks of your draft with these players. Last year, I made this same exact video. And sure, we had some misses like, you know, Ty Chandler, whatever, whatever. Like these guys are 16th round picks for a reason. They're they're not supposed to hit. But the list also had Puka Nakua and Jaden Reed. And one of the dudes I'm actually starting this list off with today was on the end of last year's list. And I put him in as a dynasty bonus player that you should pick up and see what happens with him. Now, every single player on this list has an ADP, an average draft position of 150 or later. So they are legitimate late round picks, if not undrafted players per industry consensus ADP. And I'm not here. I'm not making this list based off of like backups who, okay, if the guy in front of them gets hurt, then this guy will have league winning upside or have like a massive impact because of that. We're not doing that bullshit analysis. These are all players that I genuinely think could crack or are in the starting lineup right now and could be impactful in fantasy regardless of what the guys in front of them do on the depth chart and regardless of the health of the guys in front of them I should be more specific with. So we're going to start this off with, as I promised, the person that we ended last year's list with, a dynasty bonus guy that was getting a little bit of hype in the offseason. I told you, you know what, stash him on the, the end of your roster if you got a little room for him. And that is Jaleel McLaughlin with an ADP of 150. So he just barely makes a list. And I think by tomorrow or, you know, a couple of days from now, he'll be in the 140s pretty securely. But he's 150 off the board. We now have Samaj P. Ryan, who's been released by the Broncos, picked up by the Kansas City Chiefs. When you look at Jaleel McLaughlin as a player, he's like one of the best per carry runners in the NFL. He's small. He's explosive. He's elusive. He is shifty. He's like that Austin Eckler mold where it's like, ah, oh, we haven't seen him at a full scale workload yet. But on limited sample size, he is incredible. OK, so you're talking about amongst running backs with 70 or more rushes last year, fourth in evasion percentage, first in missed tackle percentage, second in yards per carry, fifth in yards after contact, second in yards before contact. OK, I don't know why I put that last one in there. That has nothing to do with him, but the drum beats. OK, so Jaleel, great runner. And what's most exciting about this entire offense is the role that they have him pegged for is the pass catching role, is the third down role, is the two and four minute role, which pairs perfectly with Bo Nix. It pairs perfectly with Sean Payton more so, okay? So looking back over the last 10 seasons, I looked at every single offense that Sean Payton has head coached. And I looked at the percentage of targets that simply go to the running back, all right? If you are an offense that is running Sean Payton's scheme, you are throwing the ball to the running back a shitload. Over the last 10 years, they have never ranked outside of the top five in terms of the percentage of their passes that go to running backs. For this reason, I like Javante, who's going much higher than Jaleel is, but I also like Jaleel. So something I've said a lot about with Dallas, and now Dallas has signed Dalvin Cook, so it makes the backfield a little bit murkier there. But for Denver, I want to leave most of my drafts with either Javante or Jaleel McLaughlin. Both of them are going to be PPR. Mwah. And you have Benjamin Albright saying that McLaughlin's going to have the Darren Sproles role. And if you remember Darren Sproles under Sean Payton in New Orleans, his PPR finishes were magnificent. He was the RB5 in 2011, the RB13 overall in 2012, and the RB24 in 2013. Darren Sproles is a small dude, okay? And you're talking about three finishes in a row in the top 24, including a 5 and a 13 finish. So Jaleel McLaughlin is a target that should be on your radar for every PPR draft that you have this offseason. Stash his ass. Next up on this list, we got Jalen Polk, the 157th player off the board, the second round rookie for the New England Patriots. I'm just super high on Polky, baby. I have been pre-draft and I will be throughout the rest of the year. Now, I just got a DM from a, a Pat's Beat reporter that I am in touch with often. He says that Jalen Polk has won the starting Z receiver role in three wide receiver sets and will be starting and splitting on and off with KJ Osborne in two wide receiver sets, which is really good news because you're a rookie. It takes a minute to get onto the field typically, but he's looked great in the preseason. And it looks more and more like Drake May is going to get the starting nod here in New England, if not in week one, pretty damn soon. And I love that for Polk because Polk and May have shown really good chemistry this offseason. They played 54 or 58 possible snaps together. I almost think, and maybe this is a little bit of a reach, but if you've been watching my videos beginning in dynasty season my upper level comp for Jalen Polk was T Higgins they got really similar draft capital and if you remember it's hard to remember a time when like T was not super highly regarded it's hard to remember a time when the Bengals were not good when Joe Burrow was not good but if you remember T Higgins's rookie year he came in with Burrow in 2020 the team the year prior was 2 and 14 the Pats last year terrible 
Burrow only played 10 games as a rookie. That team went 4-11 and behind a bad offensive line, very similar to what Drake May might experience this year in New England. Despite that, T. Higgins as a rookie finished with 67 catches, 908 yards, and 6 touchdowns. Bad offenses, bad offensive line, top three rookie pick coming in with their new wide receiver. It's all lining up. The stars are aligning. Love Jalen Polk as a late round wide receiver pick. Moving down the running back bandwagon, we have Kamani Vidal, the Los Angeles Chargers sixth round pick this year. 195 overall. He has officially made the 53-man roster along with Jared Patterson and obviously Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. But Gus Edwards is 29 years old, and this is the first time he's running behind a quarterback not named Lamar Jackson. J.K. Dobbins' injury history at this point looks like a fucking CVS receipt. These are not minor, minor tweaks. These are not ankle tweaks. These are Achilles tears. These are ACL tears. These are real things that drastically affect how explosive you are. Kamani Vidal finally got in to preseason action in week two, looked really good, and then they immediately rest him in week three, uh, gave him the starter treatment, which tells me that they had no plans of cutting him. If they only saw him in week two of preseason and were like, we don't actually need to see him again, we know he's on the roster, that's a very good sign. It tells me he was never actually in jeopardy of being cut. When you look at his athletic profile, great BMI, 5'8", 213, though, Really good speed for 213 pounds, 4'4", 640. Like, speed, size, can catch the ball. Great production in college. Kamani Vidal could be a super, super under-the-radar uh, player this year in that Chargers backfield, which I think is more open than most people are assuming, especially behind a great offensive line that just took Joe All. You have Harbaugh and Greg Roman coming in. It's going to be a run-first offense that has a lot of opportunity going on in the backfield. If someone back there shows explosion, probably won't be Dobbins, and it definitely won't be Gus Edwards. If Adal shows some pop, some juice in the backfield, he'll continue to get more and more of an incremental role in that backfield. I think the same goes with Tyrone Tracy. Tyrone Tracy's a full-ass grown man. Tyrone Tracy's damn near 25, 26 years old as a rookie. He'll be 25 this year. But Tyrone Tracy, on the back of being 24 right now, turning 25, that means he's got a lot of college experience. And the good part is the first four years in college, he was actually a wide receiver. He was the Gatorade player of the year in high school as a wide receiver, then transferred to Purdue in year five, became a running back, and then broke out. So he has a three-down skill set. He's 5'11", 210 pounds. He has 4'4", speed, and of course can catch the shit out of the ball. So sure, the Giants want to use Devin Singletary, but Devin Singletary is not a workhorse back. He's not someone that compiles 300 touches over the course of a season. Tyrone Tracy, I think, has the talent to get into that backfield immediately. He's already the running back two on the depth chart. And this is a team that's going to trail a lot. This is a team that's going to need to play catch up. And Singletary is a fine pass catcher. But I think if they're going to use someone in the role of the pass catching back, it's going to be the former wide receiver that has the requisite three down size, the three down speed, the three down skill set. And he's another one like Kamani Vidal, where as the season wears on, maybe not week one, two, three, you're putting him in your lineup, but they will really, really quickly be one of the top like waiver wire ads. Week four or five, week six or seven, one of them starts getting 35, 45. It starts creeping up 48% of the snaps in that backfield. It's go time for Mr. Tyrone Tracy Jr., who is the age of a senior. All right, keep going down the list. We got Jalen Tolbert, ADP 230. He has already won the wide receiver three job in Dallas. This is an offense that's going to throw the ball a ton. Dak had 4,500 passing yards last year. And right now, going into this year, if you look on underdog right now, they have Mahomes as the only quarterback that has higher passing yards stats than Dak Prescott. When you look at the depth chart there, where Tolbert is three, Brandon Cooks is the wide receiver too. He is 31 years old, and he has not topped 700 receiving yards since 2021. So you're talking about a dude who's getting older and probably getting worse, okay? The only reason that we even think he probably did that last year, in your mind, you thought he had a good year, is because he popped and scored like eight touchdowns. But the year prior, he scored three. So if touchdown regression comes, or if he just goes back to like what normal touchdown scoring rate is on less than 700 yards, he's going to be really underwhelming this year. And that will provide an avenue for Jalen Tolbert to step up. He's not someone I'm actively going and like drafting around two rounds, three rounds above where you need to get him. But Tolbert's a dude that last round pick, I'd be fine stashing him. You know, you're playing in your friends and family league. They haven't even heard about this dude. But you know what you should be hearing about if you're playing with your friends and family? It is league safe, and it is the easiest place in the world to organize your league and then just send the link to the group chat where they could pay, all right? If you play in a fantasy football league that has a buy-in, right, $50, $100, whatever it is, you sign up for free on league safe. 
You start your league on there. The settings are all really customizable. If you do keeper leagues, if you do rollover money, whatever it is, you could do a simple league as well. It creates a league for you on there. You send the link to the group chat. And again, they could pay on there in a number of ways. I don't know exactly which ways they could pay on there, but it's like credit card, PayPal, whatever it is, you could pay right on the platform. It takes the fucking pain in the ass system of going through Venmo and going through Cash App and going through Cash itself and like all that kind of shit that everyone wants to send you. League Safe is the GOAT. And if you are a first time commissioner on League Safe using our link down below, you are getting $50 off your buy in as a first time commissioner. So if you're setting up a $50 league with your coworkers, your buy in just got paid for, okay? Because of Nikki Baby, because of Uncle Nick. If you think Tyrone Tracy's old, Nick's fucking old. And I have wisdom to deplore on you, all right? So use the code League Safe down below leasefe.com forward slash bdge will get you linked up double cheeked up jalen mcmillan up tampa bay wide receiver three is next up on this list he's going far down draft boards he has officially secured the wide receiver three job he has looked great this preseason todd bowles came out he said he's seen everything he's needed to see out of jalen mcmillan he's been exactly who they thought he'd been when they drafted him he was a third round pick out of washington if some of you guys are new to fantasy right now and you're just getting back up to speed, Washington had a phenomenal passing offense last year. Roma Dunze, who is now Chicago Bear, a top 10 pick. Jalen Polk, who we already talked about, was an early second round pick, went to New England. And then you have the forgotten man, Jalen McMillan, who went to Tampa Bay, immediately stepped in and secured the wide receiver three role there. They need something behind Godwin and Evans, right? Evans gets a lot of targets. Godwin's cool. But Jalen McMillan has been playing his balls out this preseason, and he's going to get a ton of snaps in this offense. So Jalen McMillan is both talented. He is young. He is explosive. He is very versatile. He could play outside. He could play inside. He needs to be one of the players on the bottom of your rosters that you stash. All right, moving down the list, we've got Andre Yoshivas. All right, I get it. It took me all summer, but I finally have his name right. Andre Yoshivas. He is the wide receiver three in Cincinnati. He is six foot three. He is 205 pounds. He runs a 4-4-3-40. He was a sixth round pick out of Princeton. Not this year, last year. Okay, so we're coming into his sophomore year. He has soaked up the majority of snaps alongside Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. He will play in the slot often. They will play him outside sometimes when they want to move Jamar Chase or T. Higgins in the slot. But I know a lot of people wanted Jermaine Burton to be the guy, and I kind of did too. I think Burton might be a better player overall, but he has moved down the depth chart pretty significantly for now, so he might be a longer-term project player. Andre Oshvas is very athletic. He is very explosive, and I think this is exactly what they need to really complement the loss that they had in Tyler Boyd leaving. Uh, that slot role. So Andre Oshavas is someone that I've been targeting in like the 17th round of every underdog draft that I am doing. Okay. And on that point, if you've done nothing up to this point in the summer to prep, the best place that you could do that is on underdog fantasy. They do best ball drafts on there. If you're new to best ball drafts, they are goaded. Okay. You just join a draft. That's like a $3 buy-in on the platform. $3 you could do it all the way up to like a thousand dollars if you want to. And you don't have to do any waiver wire moves. You don't do any sit starts. You don't do any trades. You just draft, which is the best part of fantasy. And then you come back. If you won the league in December, January, you collect your winnings from it. Okay. So if you sign up on underdog fantasy, download the app right now, it'll be linked down in the show notes. One of the first things down there and use our code BDGE. When you deposit on there, they're going to hit you with a deposit bonus all the way up to a thousand bucks. Then you'll have like twenty dollars, thirty dollars on your accounts to do, you know, ten best ball drafts before you do your actual draft coming up in a few days. And you will be prepped and ready and know where the player pockets and values are. It is the best way to prep for your draft, so you know exactly what's going on. And if you get on the platform and use our code, I didn't even say this yet, but you get our draft guide with all of our rankings absolutely free sent to you with a first time deposit using code. B D G E and one of the final favorite picks of mine all the way down here is Jordan Whittington, the LA Rams rookie wide receiver out of the university of Texas. Now he finds himself in a similar situation in LA that he did to Texas, which was competing with super talented players in front of him. When he came out of Texas last year, like, of course it was tough for him to really break out when you're competing with AD Mitchell when you are competing with Xavier Worthy, when you're competing with Jonathan Brooks, when you're competing with Chavian Sanders. I mean, you're talking about four early, real early draft capital type players in one college offense, all right? You got three guys that were picked within the first two days. Jordan Winnington was a five-star recruit coming out of high school. The drumbeats have been steady all offseason. I'm talking about starting from OTAs into training camp. He has dominated both of the preseason games that he played in before they gave him the starter treatment and just completely rested him in week three, which is like cut down, make or break, this is where you prove whether or not you should be on the team. They rested him for that, telling us that he was a surefire 
53-man roster slot. And, of course, he got in that. The problem with him coming out of Texas was his lengthy, lengthy injury history, all right? If you go back to the injuries that he's battled at Texas, he injured his groin and had hernia surgery before getting to Texas. He re-aggravated the injury and then had to have surgery in 2019. Hamstring issues in the preseason of 2020, tore his meniscus in 2020, season opener, surgery, broken clavicle in 2021, hamstring issues during the combine. So you can look at it one of two ways. He's just injury prone, and that's just going to be what he is for the rest of his fucking career. Or you could say this dude was a five-star recruit, extremely talented, that got bad luck in the injury department. And the talent is what this player actually is. Now, I like Demarcus Robinson as the three in L.A. and his fit here as a role player because he's very different than Puka and Cooper Cup. And Jordan Whittington falls right into the Puka and Cooper Cup like play style where it's over the middle. It's shifty. It's good after the catch. It's like really tough hands. He's going to get in your fucking face and hit you in the helmet. Demarcus Robinson, I didn't even realize this. This is his eighth year in the NFL. The dude has never cracked 500 receiving yards. So, again, he's a good complement skill set to Puka and Cooper, but Whittington is like a clone of Puka in terms of style and play set. So, with Whittington, I think they're going to get creative with him. I think they're going to run a lot of three wide receiver sets in L.A., and I think that they will rotate him in as a wide receiver three relatively often this year. Okay, So, those are like the players I am highest on that I think could make an impact right away. Two other guys that I didn't put on the list because I feel like their ADPs are a little bit higher. Maybe I'm cheating, but I'm going back to the well on Michael Wilson. All right. We weren't wrong last year. We were just early. The wide receiver two in Arizona. He is the clear wide receiver two. Greg Dortch, Zay Jones. They're all, I don't know what they're doing out there, but Michael Wilson is the wide receiver two behind Marvin Harrison Jr. Finally got Kyler Murray for the full year. All right. Of course, what is he going to do last year with fucking Clayton Toon and Josh Dobbs and this trash at quarterback? This is Michael Wilson's year. Okay. Again, not wrong just early even last year we weren't even that wrong all right third round pick this is his year Khalil Herbert I don't know if he's actually going down here pick 173 uh but he has gotten so much run with the star. he's gonna have a massive ground role in Chicago okay mark my words DeAndre Swift is the starter there he's a clear one but Herbert's gonna take a ton of touches back there he might be the goal line back he might work his way into the starting role again like this is the part of the video where I gave you the value, and now I'm talking about, you know, if this happens, then we like this guy. If this happens, then the handcuff comes into, into play, all right? So let me pop off for a little bit. Khalil Herber here. If DeAndre Swift gets hurt, and that's not just out of left field because DeAndre Swift is always hurt. If he gets hurt, Khalil Herbert is going to have a ridiculous workload. Ro Roshan Johnson, been over overhyped his entire career. One-year career, was overhyped for it, okay? He's not like a real serious runner. He is he's a tough dude that can pass block and all that, but he ain't like an NFL. Clue Herbert is a much better runner than Roshan Johnson is with the football. Clue Herbert's going to have a big role in Chicago. Braylon Allen, one of my favorite handcuffs in football right now behind Brees Hall. I don't think there's real fantasy work to be had for him. Uh, outside of a Brees Hall injury, but he is the handcuff you want to own there. Jordan Mason is the handcuff that you want to own in San Francisco because Elijah Mitchell just got put on season-ending IR, uh, and it's Jordan Mason's job behind him. So if you're worried about C-Mac and his calf injury, if you draft C-Mac early on, Jordan Mason is the back to own behind him. So we have some other handcuffs, like obviously Blake Worm's a handcuff, but he's like a 10th, 11th round pick. He doesn't really qualify here. Uh, but those are the players that I want you to be stashing, man. Jaleel McLaughlin. Jalen Polk, Kamani Vidal, Tyrone Tracy, Jalen Tolbert, Jalen McMillan, Andre Yoshivas, Jordan Whittington. And then, you know, you got the Kula Herberts, Michael Wilson's, Braylon Allen's, Jordan Masons. There you have it. Just under 20 minutes. We just hit the 20 minute mark. That was precise. And if you want to be precise with your league, do so on leaguesafe.com forward slash BDGE link below. If you want our draft guide, if you want to draft in some best ball leagues, do so on Underdog Fantasy with our code BDGE. If you're a first time depositor, $10 or more will get you deposit match. It'll also get you Travis Kelsey half a receiving yard for week one. Free money. Free money. Mwah. I love you. Smoochies.